Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you're new around here, my name's Ryan from Tragedy Tales and on this channel, every week, we share stories of all things tragedy, such as caving, maritime disasters, plane crashes and more. So if you're into true horror, consider tapping that subscribe button. But in this video, back by popular request, the Bizarre Death series returns to highlight that death can come from anywhere at any time. And in this video, we've got some really bizarre ones, so viewer discretion is advised. But without hesitation, sit back, grab a drink, and relax. Here are yet more bizarre deaths. On Thursday, July the 22nd of this year, a man named Khalil attended a pool party for his work when tragedy unfolded. Khalil was a 32-year-old man and he worked in an office in Israel when he and his colleagues were invited to a pool party. The villa had been rented from a couple in their 60s by the marketing company that Khalil worked for. A pool party sounded like the perfect way to cool down. So that following day, around 75 employees, including Khalil and his friend, attended the pool party. Dance music was blasting, the sky was blue, and the weather was scorching. Everyone seemed to be loving the pool. There were inflatable animals and linos floating. It was lining up to be a party to remember. But a few hours later, after a few drinks, Khalil and his friend sat by the poolside discussing life. This is when they decided they'd have a dip in the pool, which at this point was packed with around 50 people. As they continued drinking in the pool, everything was absolutely fine until the water of the pool suddenly began to drop and currents dragged people on their inflatables to the center of the pool. The current increased massively. The water was dropping at an insane rate and a whirlpool had formed in the center. The lifeguard on duty that day shouted for everyone to get out of the pool, but people thought it was a game and actually refused to leave. But it quickly became clear that this was no joke. The whirlpool got out of control and started dragging people under the water. Inflatables were everywhere and it was just chaos. Before they knew it, the pool was completely empty. They were now standing at the bottom in their shorts, completely bemused as to what had just happened. In the center was just a pile of inflatables, but hiding just underneath, they found a huge sinkhole had actually formed right underneath the pool. And within seconds, it had hemorrhaged all of its water. A head count was done and they found that one man was missing. It was Khalil. Paramedics and rescue arrived on scene and they said that it was a very bizarre and unusual case. Rescue teams peered into the newly formed muddy wet hole at the bottom of the pool and it just seemed to go on and on. They immediately began to shore up the structure of the pool to prevent further collapses and a rescue dog with a GoPro was sent into the hole. Here they found it actually extended for 15 meters down or around 50 feet in length. After hours of searching, they finally found poor Khalil. His body had been crammed between rocks by the force of the water. He was right at the bottom of the sinkhole. He had tragically drowned. Now, while this is a bizarre, unlucky set of circumstances, there's always someone to blame. Attention then turned to the homeowners and it was found that they built this pool without any planning permission. To make it even worse, they'd not even built it to the proper standards. It was found that the pool would not have been granted permission due to the issues on the site. So they were detained on suspicion of causing fatality via negligence. They were placed on house arrest and now await trial in Israel. In 2021, a 52 year old woman named Jackie was a popular bartender that pulled pints in almost every pub in Blackburn, UK. Her bubbly personality made her a proper character in her town. She had the most beautiful sense of humor and was all around a loving, nice person. She had two daughters and in early January, her nephew Josh had been living with her. In the early hours of Sunday, January the 24th, Josh had gone downstairs feeling a bit peckish. Jackie made him a late night bacon sandwich and he wolfed it down. Josh then returned to his bed where he drifted off to sleep. That following day, Josh woke up at around 1 p.m. and left his room around two. He trudged down the stairs and entered the kitchen where he was met with an absolute nightmare. Jackie was suspended from the oven by her pajamas. Her top was tightly wrapped around her neck and was entangled in the oven door. But just by looking at her, 
it was clear that she had died. A full post-mortem was conducted and it was found that there was no sign of disease, natural death, and the official cause of her death was the compression of her neck caused by her pajama top being stuck in the oven door. The coroner said, and I quote, It is very unusual that someone who was fit and well managed to suspend themselves accidentally from the oven door. What appears to have happened here is that for some reason she's fallen and caught her pajama top on the lower handle of the door. They couldn't explain how she ended up in that position. It was an extremely unusual case and in 20 years of them doing it, they've never come across anything like it. Now this death is just bizarre. This is a true story, but there's no diagram or photo of her kitchen. So I'm having a hard time picturing it in my head. I'm guessing the oven was at chest height and she wasn't very tall, but I am puzzled. So do let me know in the comments below how you think this happened. In 2007, a man named Ian lived alone in his home in Teesside, UK. Ian was an avid member of the Hardwick Baptist Church and had been for 26 years. He was an extremely skilled organist, always playing the right song for the right occasion. Despite not being professionally taught, he just had an ear for it. He was described as a friendly, kind man, always ready to give a helping hand. On January the 26th, 2007, multiple 999 calls were received stating that a loud vacuum cleaner had been running for many hours and that it was making a very loud racket. But as it was not on sociable hours, they couldn't do anything. As the night was drawing to a close, a friend that couldn't get in contact with him visited his home to check. His friend arrived at the property to find the door unlocked. They entered and they followed the sound of the vacuum cleaner. They went up the stairs to find a bizarre scene. The vacuum cleaner was attached to a large transparent plastic bag where all the air had been sucked out with brown duct tape beside. Inside the bag was Ian, naked in the fetal position. He had his shins tied with brown duct tape and his wrists were bound by a silver chain. Tragically, he'd vacuum packed himself. Police were called and they arrived at 10.40 p.m. where they swiftly turned off the vacuum cleaner and declared Ian dead. His cause of death was suffocation. Investigators found no drugs or alcohol in his system and concluded that they couldn't see how anyone forced him in there. The official statement said that Ian got in the bag himself, tied his hands and feet, and then set the vacuum going, knowing there was no way to stop it. There were no signs to show that he had intended to end his life. But of course, we can't be sure. Police believe that this was a bizarre sex act gone wrong, and they said that no suspicious circumstances were found. But I'm really not sure how he managed to climb in the bag with his hands and legs tied and then managed to turn on the vacuum cleaner. This one just doesn't sit right with me. On Saturday, February the 9th, 2019, a 51-year-old disabled woman by the name of Vanessa decided she would visit her local park with her dog in Hull, UK. She was minding her own business when, out of the blue, a random goose decided to attack her. It came swooping down at such speeds that it caused Vanessa to lurch backwards. This motion caused an immense ripping pain in her chest and she instantly knew that something was terribly wrong. She rushed back to her car and quickly drove home. When she arrived, she dialed for an ambulance. The ambulance arrived and Vanessa complained of pain, similar to heart attack victims. They provided her immediate pain relief but when she arrived at A&E, it seems that not all of the correct information was passed over to A&E. She was prescribed morphine and left on her own for what seemed like forever, in extreme amounts of pain. At 1.35 a.m., two hours later, a junior doctor carried out an ECG and marked it abnormal. Vanessa questioned this and was told that there was something wrong with her heart. But bizarrely, even after this discovery, Vanessa was still discharged that same night with a non-life-threatening chest muscular injury. She returned home and managed to get to sleep. But when she woke up, the pain had only got worse. She made it to the afternoon and then she ran out of painkillers. She phoned her mother and asked if she could bring some more and they could tell in her voice that this was serious. Immediately, Vanessa's mother and father, along with her brother, set off to her home. But by the time they got there, they walked into an absolute tragedy. They found Vanessa on the bed, lifeless. 
They started CPR and an ambulance arrived in just three minutes, but when they arrived, it was obvious that nothing could be done. A coroner found that Vanessa died of an aneurysm, rupture slash dissection. She had no previous heart issues and it was concluded that the tear was most likely caused by the encounter with the goose. The hospital, of course, denied any culpability for Vanessa's death. But this story is tragic. And it goes to show that even a goose can lead to your death. Now this death is more lack of thought than bizarre. In 2019, a 24 year old man named Zafer had been sentenced to community service after he was convicted of causing wounding in Turkey. He was attending the community service, but he decided that it really wasn't for him. So he and his two friends plotted a way that they could get out of it. They thought that if he was in hospital, then he wouldn't be able to attend. So they looked around for ways to hospitalize him and they settled on the most ridiculous of ways. They decided they would shoot Safer in the back with two pillows strapped to him with a shotgun at close range. It's a well-known fact that shotguns are deadly at close range due to the spread of the inner pellets inside the casings. They can penetrate tissue, organs, and even straight through bone. So without a thought, Zafer's two friends began strapping the pillows to his back, and before they knew it, they pulled the trigger on their 12-gauge shotgun. After the shot, they spun him around to see if he was okay, but of course, he was bleeding profusely and barely responsive. They rushed him to a nearby hospital, but he was declared dead on arrival. The hospital staff phoned the police and they shortly arrived and detained both of his friends. The two men explained to the police that they were convinced that the two pillows would stop the shotgun shell from fatally injuring him. A statement that is so bizarre, it makes it borderline unbelievable. One man was eventually released, while the 18-year-old man who pulled the trigger was sentenced, but I was unable to find out how long for. In 1980, a 70-year-old woman named Monica was the mayor of Betterton, Maryland. And on the 20th of March, 1980, Monica went down to the Betterton sewage treatment plant to clean one of the edges of the vats. Apparently, this was something that she did often, as she didn't have much to do, she'd often go down there to test chlorine and sediment. She crept down into the treatment plant and walked across the metal walkway, suspended above multiple vats of raw sewage. Now, it's unsure what exactly happened because she was completely alone, but it seems that Monica lost her footing walking along one of the catwalks. She slipped and fell four feet straight into one of the tanks. It was described as putty, quicksand, and being 15 meters in depth or around 50 feet. She must have screamed for help, but as she was the only one in there, it was a truly hopeless situation. The following morning, a town engineer entered the sewage plant to carry out his work. He started his shift and eventually came across the grisly scene. Monica was laid face down in the sewage. She had drowned. She was brought out of the tanks and laid to rest and it was reported that further safety precautions were added following her untimely death. On the 10th of May, 2017, an 89-year-old man named Robert was actually celebrating his 89th birthday. He had just been to go and celebrate with his family and was driving to his home in Florida in his 2016 Mercedes G300. Apart from being his birthday, it was like any other day. He was driving along with the palm trees passing by his side when suddenly, for an unknown reason, he verged to the left of the road and hit a water hydrant. The impact of the crash was quite severe. The hydrant he'd hit was gushing water at an immense rate. It was even hitting the palm trees on the other side of the road. But Robert had no injuries from the crash. With the hydrant still gushing, Robert swung open his car door and stepped onto the wet ground to inspect the damage to his car. This is when his day took a turn that nobody could have predicted. The water had actually loosened the ground around him and made a makeshift sinkhole right underneath his feet. The suction from the water sucked him straight underground and into a hole that had formed underneath his car. A passerby saw what was going on and rushed over to try and assist him. But the water was so incredibly strong, it was impossible to pull him out. 
Emergency services were called and Robert spent four minutes under the water before the pressure was released and he was dragged out. But when they got him out, he had drowned. Medical staff and investigators ruled this as a rare sequence of events. Hundreds, if not thousands of people hit fire hydrants and most are not fatal. But it seems Robert got bizarrely unlucky on his birthday. And it really makes you think that when your time comes, there's no avoiding it. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you for checking out this video. I hope that you were able to take something away from hearing these truly tragic and bizarre deaths. Whether that be to hold your loved ones close or to remember the fact that life is fleeting and you must make the most of it. But whatever you take from this video, let me know what you thought in the comments below. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.